Hello, everybody. This is the first webinar of the series of the webinars on Max Code given by the Max Center. Uh, let's hope that the next webinars will be a little bit uh, less complicated. Okay, and uh, well, Max, Web Max Center is organizing a series of webinars to present the no main novelties on the, on, its, uh, on, the, on the main code supported by the center. Uh, and uh, the first one is the one on Quantum Espresso, as I was saying. Then there is also the announcement of the next one is also, is also out and will be the one of the group of AIDA that will be uh, presented the 27th of May at the same hour. The other two scheduled are the, those of Yambo, uh, the June 16 at 3, at 3 p.m. as well. And then uh, the one of CP2K that we said will be the June 4th, 24th at uh, 11 in the morning. Uh, for more novelties and to know when the, web, the dates of the webinars about Big DFT, Flair and Siesta, stay, in stay tuned and visit the web page of the Max Center. So, um, what this, um, this webinar will present, uh, um, this webinar will be about how to use Quantum Espresso on, uh, on systems based on CUDA, on CUDA GPU. Uh, the, um, CUDA GPU. Uh, the three speakers of this webinar will be me, Pietro De Lucas. I uh, work in CISA in Trieste since 2015. I work in the group of Stefano Baroni and I collaborate with uh, Paolo Giannozzi and many others to the development and maintenance of Quantum Espresso. And the second speaker should be uh, Fabio Affinito from the uh, Cineca High Performance, Computing, High Performance Computing Center in Bologna. Is, uh, um, is also uh, the group leader of, is also the work package leader of the, um, of the co-design group of the Max Center. The, the co-design group is the group that coordinates the actions uh, of exploration on novel uh, architectures, novel options uh, for the uh, exascale technology. And uh, um, we will talk uh, us about uh, uh, how we, it's organized a GPU-based system, uh, high performance computing system, and he will um, mainly focus on the uh, architecture of the Marconi Cento partition in Cineca. The third speaker will be Pietro Bonfa, who is a researcher at the University of Parma, and he will uh, present, he will, uh, he's been developing the uh, GPU version of Quantum Espresso since he worked in Cineca a couple of years ago and he's still the main maintainer and coordinator of the project, even if now he's at the University of Parma. And he will present us a, a talk in which will explain us uh, how to compile and run Quantum Espresso on, on CUDA GPU systems. So, um, uh, Quantum Espresso is a project that started uh, almost 20 years ago in, in, 2000, in 2002, and, this, and it was made by the merge of two uh, of three main uh, projects. One project was the PWSCF and Phonon project. It was a project uh, that was that these were codes that based on plane waves and pseudo potentials, and that performed self consistent computations. Plus Phonon is, is a code, uh, one of the first codes that is said perform lattice dynamics by linear response. This code was joined together with two other projects that instead performed Carparinello ab initio molecular dynamics. And um, the main reason because these three projects joined together was because they wanted to provide a common platform for making it easier to, uh, to develop innovative methods uh, uh, for, material, uh, for material simulation and uh, uh, make it easier to introduce better numerical algorithm, uh, algorithms. Uh, even if uh, the project was uh, oriented towards innovation, one other, main, um, one other main objective of the project was actually to always have a, a to, to always provide the users with, uh, um, with uh, uh, efficient codes that run on the, on the state-of-the-art high performance machines. And uh, in, order to, uh, in order to do this, uh, and in order to do this, uh, the code has always been uh, 
updated to the new to the novel architectures and uh, uh, to the novel architectures so the project is coordinated by the quantum espresso foundation which is a non-profit organization and um, this, uh, the foundation coordinates and supports the research and education outreach of the quantum espresso community, owns the trademark and protects the open source character of quantum espresso, and uh, also uh, takes care of raising funds to foster the quantum espresso project and uh, uh, help the development on, uh, on the topic. As I was saying, the project, uh, um, as I was saying, quantum espresso is uh, uh, there's a, a very strong orientation towards efficiency and to be to have an efficient code one needs to uh, keep the system updated with current technologies and uh, um, this is particularly difficult in these times because the architectures of the machine as we are approaching the exascale uh, exascale uh, scale technology are changing and are changing in a disordered way so it's not very clear how this um, how this technology will evolve and so it we need to reorganize the code in order that it is flexible that it, and it can be adapted to different technologies at different uh, points for doing this we have we are reorganizing the code in different layers at the lower layer, there are the, uh, the libraries. We have uh, low level libraries that are those that have to um, provide the, um, the versatility of the code in order that is able to uh, adapt itself to different architectures. It provides, uh, uh, it provides abstraction for the most common, um, for the most recurrent uh, constructs that are used in the code. On top of this layer, there is the layer of the uh, mathematical libraries. These are the libraries that provide instead uh, I, uh, I provide the performance portability. And uh, all these libraries uh, have the feature that they have a, a completely encapsulated uh, data structure are accessible only with uh, interfaces. And uh, um, uh, and can be used uh, in other codes with very small refactoring and indeed uh, this uh, part of the pro this part of the this part of the code will be part of the max libraries is part of the development done inside the max center and these libraries will be uh, delivered as uh, max libraries on top of the mathematics of the libraries there is the, uh, the, re the layer of the modules the modules are instead uh, conceived they're organized in order to facilitate the development inside quantum espresso code. They are, they, are, uh, uh, they are as well encapsulated and provided with APIs, but they need to share uh, their data structure with the main code. And for this reason, um, and for the reason they, this reason, they are more, uh, more suited for the development inside the quantum espresso suite or in codes that share with quantum espresso the data structure and the, the, the general build up. On top of this layer, there is the layer of the applications. The applications are actually the codes that the users uh, that the users uh, run to obtain their calculations and their numbers. And uh, the main applications are PWSCF, that is the application that computes total energies, forces, stresses, and may do and does this using. Uh, Plane waves plus pseudo potentials, or uh, the PAW method. It can run uh, all kinds of density functional theory, uh, all, all kinds of density functional theory, and all, uh, also uh, with, with access to collinear and non-collinear magnetism and, and many other more um, features. Uh, one other application is the Carparinello code that instead runs a initial molecular dynamics. Then there is the collection of uh, there is the phonon code that is the one that computes uh, uh, lattice dynamical properties and uh, dielectric response and harmonic terms using linear response. One other code that is based on linear response is the HP code that instead uses the same technique to compute the Abad parameters. Uh, then there are applications based on uh, time-dependent density functional perturbational theory, and these are mainly used to uh, compute optical spectra and collective excitation. 
Another package that is promoted by the group of Feliciano Giustino is the one is EPW that computes electron phonon coupling with Vanier function. Uh, together with all this, there are a plethora of other codes that, in, that interoperate with quantum espresso, and in the interoperating with quantum espresso, they um, they need to uh, to read the data, the data from uh, the output of quantum espresso and elaborate it. There are different packages. There are packages that are developed in a compatible way with quantum espresso, are, are very large structured codes. Well, instead, there are other codes that only need to um, and totally uh, need to read the output uh, issuing from quantum espresso. Uh, to facilitate this part of interoperability, the one with uh, um, external codes that uh, does, do not know almost anything about the quantum espresso uh, or uh, how it's organized, but just only need to take the data. We have, tried, we are, um, we have adopted uh, data formats that are kind of um, interoperable in the sense that uh, uh, they are uh, hierarchical uh, and it's possible to, uh, to provide information of the format of the data and the organization of the data to the application that is reading this data. We have chosen the XML uh, format for uh, the small data which are co uh, collected in one data file and uh, in order to instruct the external application on how these data are organized, we provide also an XSD schema file that informs the um, the external application of how it is organized. Then we have, uh, for the large binary files, instead we have adopted the HDF5 um, format. In this case, the information of the format, uh, the information of the organization is provided by the, uh, by the library itself and uh, the file is decorated with attributes that help ex external application to understand uh, the meaning of the data set that is reading, how it's organized and how uh, how to read and elaborate it. To facilitate the usage of these uh, new data formats, we have also delivered uh, two, uh, two Python packages that uh, uh, may be used to read and convert this data file. One package is a QI schema that is available, uh, available on PIP and is also uh, is available on PIP. And QI schema is a pure Python package that, uh, can, be, uh, that, that can be used to read this data and convert it to main data formats. And then we have a post -quid. and instead is a program that it's a little bit more uh, cumbersome to, uh, to install. And for the re this reason, we, are, we have not been able yet to provide the PIP, uh, PIP uh, to provide it on PIP. This code needs to, uh, the setup of this code needs to compile an important part of uh, Fortran, uh, Fortran sources to be run. Uh, these are still un incomplete and they need, uh, the, they need, more, the, they need many, many more actions and whoever is willing to, uh, to help in developing them is welcome to contribute uh, using these two, uh, these two uh, interacting with these two repositories. So uh, who are the users of Quantum Espresso? The users of Quantum Espresso are mostly researchers and the students in academia, but there is, there is also a, a consistent part of people in the industry that is using the code. Uh, to, uh, to expand the, uh, the audience of the users, since 2002, the, the, uh, the Quantum Espresso Foundation has been promoting schools and events all around the world to uh, teach to uh, to disseminate the code. Uh, when, whoever is willing to download the uh, less stable version can download it from this, uh, from, the, uh, this, uh, from, this uh, from this link. And uh, uh, the last stable version that has been delivered, the uh, 6.5, uh, has uh, registered more than 9,000 uh, downloads up to uh, today. Uh, whoever uh, uh, resources for the users to help running the code may be found on the site of Quantum Espresso, but uh, one, of, one important uh, resource is also the interaction with the other users that can be done using the mailing list. That, uh, to register to the mailing list, one can uh, visit this, second, this site, but uh, for many, many, many of the questions that users are actually looking 
are often already been posed and answered, and so it's also possible to browse uh, this, uh, to browse to browse previous posts of the mailing list and find their uh, answers and instructions and then. Uh, whoever is willing instead to collaborate the development of quantum espresso um, may visit instead the GitLab repository, which is placed at this, uh, at this link. In this link, people may uh, propose their own developments and uh, uh, posing a, uh, uh, posting a merge request, but all the users that find any bug or any problem can may, may, be, may post them in the issues section where they can keep track of how the solution of the uh, of the bugs is proceeding. Uh, in particular, for the GPU version of the code, the, uh, the, the repository is different and is please and is um, um, is different and is and it is uh, this link. It co is coordinated by Pietro Bonfa. That uh, and is coordinated by Pietro Bonfa. Uh, we have also a mirror of the main repository on GitHub at, at, at this link. And, uh, I'm sorry that maybe I've been a little bit uh, too fast and in a rush. And so if uh, you want more information and you uh, want to learn more, more about Quantum Espresso, you can visit these links or read these uh, two res recent papers. This one is a paper uh, uh, that has uh, just, uh, uh, just been published and it, and it is specific of quantum espresso on GPUs. Well, instead, this one is a paper that illustrates much better uh, what, is, uh, our, uh, quantum es what are the features of quantum espresso, uh, espresso and, uh, what it is, uh, uh, and uh, what you can do with quantum espresso. In, uh, if you want to have more information about the libraries uh, that I was talking previously, uh, you can find more information in the Max Center site at, the, uh, at this link. So uh, thanks for your attention. And uh, in case you want to, uh, and uh, thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot, Pietro. Um, I see a couple of questions uh, that perhaps uh, could be worth be discussed uh, uh, live. One is uh, when the phonon code will be implemented and ported on GPUs, uh, and then um, another one related to the CP code, and also whether uh, the QE scheme and uh, post QE support HDF5. Perhaps we can start with the Pietro De Lugas uh, with this last question concerning HDF5, and then I would then uh, ask yes. to Pietro Bonfa for the GPU porting. Okay. Uh, so uh, the question, uh, so uh, the, what was the question, what, what's the question of, about the HDF5? So repeat, uh, can you repeat it? QE schema and post QE support uh, HDF5. Yes, yes, they support HDF5. HDF5. They can read the, the charge file, they can read the wave functions files, and uh, um, we are adding more and more uh, export tools to export them to, uh, to, different, uh, to, to different formats like Cube, uh, XSF, uh, or, or others. And, uh, um, and uh, obviously, if there are more formats, uh, people, uh, I mean, uh, people is welcome to contribute to them uh, to, in the, to contribute them in the repository. And uh, we have also an experimental version that uh, not only supports HDF5, but also Fortran binary files, but that one is a little bit tricky because it's obviously dependent on which compiler uh, you've been using to write the files. So, uh, Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Pietro. Then perhaps can we go quickly to Pietro Bonfa concerning the other questions about GPU porting? Uh, okay, thanks, Andrea. Well, actually, I think I will answer this question during my presentation. So maybe uh, can just wait uh, a few minutes uh, and then I will present what is available in the GPU port and, uh, and what are the plans for the future. So no, no spoiler. Exactly. <laughs> 
and then probably a, a very last question to the all the speakers. Uh, can we use Max libraries for other codes? And uh, are those available? Which language you use to create such uh, files? Uh, yes, we, in principle, we can use Max libraries for other codes, and that's, that, that's what they are meant for, and uh, that's that's actually the ambition of the, of the of the Max Center to provide tools that are available for uh, as more persons as possible. So, uh, uh, so obviously, as for now, it's um, it's been more an internal thing. So it's been used. With, I mean, there they've been just exchanged within uh, Max codes. So. Um, so if anybody tries to use them in other codes and. Uh, is welcome and if there are uh, problems issues and can re can interact with the max center is also more welcome more, more welcome than uh, for this interaction okay so uh, i think that uh, we we are done with the questions now so there are a few more that i'll answer offline and perhaps we can uh, uh, resume at the very end of the of the webinar. So I would uh, uh, leave the stage to the second uh, speaker now. Yes, maybe I can start. Um, uh, starting from yes. Okay, so uh, I will try to share my screen, but you know that I'm not so smart with computers. So let's cross our fingers. Uh, Good enough. Um, you can okay. see it now. Yes, it's okay. Yes. Perfect. So uh, this will be my short introduction to uh, Marconi 100. My name is Fabio Finito. I work in Cinega. I lead the team of high level support. And I'm sorry that uh, I have not a good picture of uh, Marconi 100. So in place, uh, I put uh, 100 pictures of Marconi. So I think that that's good enough. Uh, but uh, uh, the most uh, important thing is if this is expected to go to the next one. OK. So this is not uh, actually uh, Marconi 100 in the picture, but this is a very similar cluster. Uh, the cluster is a, an IBM cluster. The code name is uh, uh, Weatherspoon. And uh, we will see that uh, our installation is composed by 55 racks. And uh, each of them has uh, uh, 980 nodes. And each node has uh, uh, two uh, Power IBM Power9 CPUs. Each uh, uh, CPU has uh, 16 cores and each core has uh, four hardware threads. We will see a little bit uh, more in detail later on that. Um, what is more important is that uh, each node has uh, four NVIDIA Volta GPUs and, uh, and uh, each of these uh, uh, GPUs uh, has uh, its own memory that is 16 gigabytes. And the GPUs are connected uh, through a network called the NVLink. Uh, totally, each node has a total uh, uh, memory of uh, 256 uh, uh, gigabytes. And uh, finally, all the nodes are connected uh, with an InfiniBand uh, network called uh, Mellanox EDR. And in particular, this kind of uh, network is uh, particularly efficient uh, and uh, it has an architecture that is uh, called the name as uh, Dragonfly. Um, here, uh, this is a, a schematic picture of uh, how uh, each node is composed. I just want to uh, recall what I already said. Uh, we have uh, two Power9 CPUs uh, and uh, we have uh, four NVIDIA uh, Volta GPUs. This is an architecture that has uh, another one uh, similar uh, kind of supercomputer in the world, that is Summit in Oak Ridge. The difference with Summit uh, is that uh, that supercomputer has 60, six uh, GPUs per node. Uh, we have uh, uh, two less, but the architecture is very, very similar. And we'll see later also that the, the, the problems are uh, quite similar. 
uh, uh, little things to to uh, notice on this picture is how the uh, components are uh, connected uh, between the uh, two uh, CPUs uh, we have a, a standard bus uh, that is uh, up to 64 uh, gigabits what is uh, uh, important is that uh, uh, as I quickly mentioned before we have an, an NVLink connection the good thing uh, about the NVLink is that on the previous uh, uh, GPUs architecture, we were used to uh, what, for example, if I had two GPUs per node and I wanted to copy a buffer, a data buffer from one GPU to the other one, what I had to do was to copy the buffer to the CPU and then from the CPU back to the other uh, GPU. And that was uh, extremely uh, time consuming because the uh, the connection between the uh, CPU and GPU was typically uh, very limited in bandwidth. Uh, this is uh, something that is uh, uh, somewhat uh, relieved by the MVLink because uh, I'm able to copy in a faster way now through the MVLink data directly from one GPU to the other one. And also because now the connection between the uh, CPU and GPU is a uh, uh, way more efficient than in the past. Um, and this is a very important because this system is a, a very, very unbalanced uh, with respect to the GPU part. So the most of the computational power of the Marconi 100 node comes from the GPU part. So the best we can exploit the GPU, the best will be our uh, results in terms of uh, computer efficiency. Um, the Power 9 is uh, uh, also a very uh, nice beast uh, and in particular in this machine we have uh, two Power 9 uh, sockets. Uh, so we have uh, two sockets with 16 cores each with uh, uh, four hardware threads each. That means that uh, in principle we could run up to 128 threads on the single node. Um, this is a, a possibility, but, but uh, this is a, a very, very small part of the uh, efficiency that can be provided by the node, because uh, we will see that uh, the more we can use the GPUs, the better uh, we will uh, have uh, back. Um, so when uh, uh, later I will uh, show you how to use Quantum Express, so we should uh, Keep in mind that we have a structure of the node that is based on two sockets. Uh, in each of the sockets, we have a certain number of cores, and in each core, we can accommodate up to four threads. This is the main schema uh, to keep in mind. Um, the other ingredient of uh, this machine, as I already told you, are the GPUs. Uh, those GPUs are the last product coming from NVIDIA uh, and so those are extremely uh, efficient uh, but uh, the, the problem is not the uh, hardware in say but uh, the, our ability to get the best from uh, this, uh, this uh, device and we will see that uh, this is uh, quite uh, complicated to be achieved but just to mention uh, so, some numbers, uh, this name, the, the, the complete name of this uh, GPU is uh, Tesla uh, Volta uh, 100 GPU. Uh, the total bandwidth uh, uh, bidirectional is uh, uh, 150 uh, plus 150. And uh, the total number of CUDA cores um, are for 5,120. And uh, for those are more interested in uh, operations that are more or less related to AI, we have uh, uh, more than 600 tensor cores. And uh, uh, putting all together, each of these devices can provide uh, 7.5 uh, double precision teraflops, which is a very, very significant amount of operations. Um, what is uh, also uh, to remind again is that uh, this architecture supports the GPU direct technology. 
So in principle, I could use uh, the, the memory of the, the, the GPUs uh, in the context of a shared memory uh, or using, uh, for example, remote uh, RDMA. Everything, uh, of course, uh, is uh, uh, for, for all of those uh, features uh, is uh, important to, to use uh, a uh, programming approach based on uh, our MPI. Uh, let's uh, give a look to the software stack. Uh, with a short recap, uh, we have uh, this machine was uh, uh, IBM uh, CPU, NVIDIA GPUs. So the ensemble of the software stack takes into account all these uh, ingredients uh, and in particular, the compilers. We have the compilers from IBM, uh, called like Excel. So Excel F90 is the Fortran compiler for uh, Fortran 90, Excel C for C and so on. We have the standard GNU uh, uh, suite. We have the PGI compilers. Uh, and uh, we have also the uh, CUDA wrappers and the CUDA libraries. Uh, for what concerns the communication libraries, uh, we have the Spectrum MPI and the Open MPI. Uh, Spectrum MPI is very, very similar and uh, it is actually derived from uh, Open MPI, but is more uh, customized to take into account all the features of this uh, machine architecture. So uh, Spectrum MPI is a flavor of OpenMPI, which implements, uh, in addition, some uh, particular features. Uh, we have the standard uh, computing libraries, uh, so IBM EXSL, uh, BLAST, uh, LAPAC, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, as well, uh, also some other utilities libraries, such as uh, HDF5 and so on. Um, all this uh, software stack is organized uh, similarly to uh, all the other supercomputers uh, in Chinega, but also elsewhere, uh, using uh, profiles. Uh, so uh, let me, uh, we will come back later to the profiles, but uh, what is important to uh, remember about here the, the, um, uh, the compilers is that uh, PGI is very important uh, because it supports for uh, open ACC and CUDA Fortran. Uh, this support is also inside the, the IBM compilers, but typically uh, we are more used to use PGI because we have more experience in the past with other uh, machines in which uh, we use the PGI. And uh, uh, Spectrum MPI, is, uh, as I told you, is uh, uh, fully optimized for this architecture. And in the profiles, I uh, will show you later, uh, you will find also uh, a, a pre-compiled version of uh, Quantum Espresso for GPUs. So if you are lazy enough, uh, there you will uh, find a good solution to start uh, very soon. Uh, this is a snapshot from, uh, from uh, Marconi 100, uh, looking at the, the structure of the profiles. Uh, as I told you, uh, this picture was took uh, like a week ago, so probably there are more few modules now, but uh, in general, there are several profiles. Uh, in each of them, uh, there are uh, specific uh, um, uh, modules for different purposes. There are the general libraries, there are the different uh, modules for the compilers, and there are some tools. For example, there is a Spark or uh, CMake or Anaconda, depending on what uh, you are uh, going to do. Uh, there are a lot of more details on the uh, user guide uh, of Marconi 100 over the Chineca website. Um, later, uh, my colleague Pietro will tell you a lot about how to uh, build the Quantum Espresso. Uh, so if you are um, not so confident in the version compiling the modules, you can build it in your own. And to do that, uh, of course, uh, you need the, the source code uh, from the repository that uh, Pietro uh, showed you before. You need the PGI compiler because uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, probably the, the best solution that we can suggest at the moment. Uh, you need the communication libraries. Uh, and uh, uh, as I told you, Spectrum MPI is a good uh, option. And then uh, also MAT libraries. Uh, there are uh, some shipped in uh, libraries uh, together with uh, 
But to master so, but uh, it's uh, definitely better if you can use uh, something like uh, Open Plus or uh, ESSL. And uh, of course, a lot of luck. Uh, there are uh, in the GitLab of the Quantum Espresso Foundation under the project uh, QE uh, GPU, a wiki in which uh, uh, several recipes to build Marconi 100 are uh, exposed. Um, so here it's one of them, but uh, maybe I won't spend too much time to discuss uh, all the details of this recipe. Uh, just to sh very, very quickly, here uh, you load the profile global, which includes all the profile that uh, you can access, the compiler, uh, the CUDA libraries, uh, and the uh, MPI. And here you should specify what are the, 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 the um, compilers that you want to use and so on. Uh, this is a little bit less interesting or, or maybe important, and it, it, uh, it says how to run on Quantum Espresso. Uh, I forgot to say that the scheduler is uh, uh, Slurm. Um, so the, the syntax is the typical syntax of Slurm. I will just uh, recall some uh, attention of uh, some uh, details. The, okay, the number of nodes is uh, trivial uh, because uh, we ask for some nodes. Uh, then uh, we sh should decide how to share the processes uh, that we want to put uh, on the machine. Uh, the first choice is how many processes we want to allocate per node. Uh, the second parameter is very important, is the number of tasks that we want to put on each socket. Of course, we have two sockets, so the number of tasks per node is twice the number of tasks per socket. In this way, I put a combination that is a good combination because a good idea is, if possible, to put one uh, task, one MPI task per each GPU. In this way, uh, I, I am targeting each GPU with one MPI. Uh, the next uh, keyword is the CPUs per task. Uh, this is a little bit uh, misleading because uh, this uh, number is actually the number of hardware threads. So let's suppose that we are using, uh, for example, eight OMP uh, thread. What I should say is that I want to use, in general, per each task, eight times four uh, hardware thread. In other words, I should put here uh, the number of OpenMP threads times four. This is the best uh, choice that I can put there. Uh, next keyword is how many GPUs I want to allocate per node, uh, for example, four. I, I could also indicate less, but in this case, uh, it's not so clever uh, as a choice. Uh, this is the uh, total amount of memory that I can ask uh, on a single node. Uh, if I ask more, I could have some problems because the, the operating system uh, uh, has the necessity to allocate uh, its own part of the node memory. This is the time uh, for which I want to uh, use uh, this uh, job script. Uh, this is the account name. Uh, you know that uh, computing hours are not for free. So the time that you spend will be uh, accounted on the, the code that uh, you have been provided by the Chineca staff. And then there are the partition or the quality of services that are uh, the, 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 the places in which you are supposed to run uh, your job. Um, this is the typical uh, instruction that I can use to submit uh, the, uh, the job. The only difference for, for, from what we are, uh, are used to do uh, using uh, a supercomputer is given by this uh, dash dash map by etc. Et this is a way to uh, mapping the processes on the resources. Uh, this is the most simple expression because here I simply say that I want that uh, uh, from each node I actually allocate n tasks. And uh, for each computing unit, uh, so each uh, uh, MPI process, I allocate, for example, OMP num threads, the number of threads specified in this uh, environment variable. Uh, and then there are all the other op options of uh, Quantum Express. Um, this is uh, probably the most important uh, uh, slide because uh, 
how to get access uh, to Marconi 100. Uh, there are two uh, channels for accessing that. One is the PRAISE, uh, PRAISE is the European uh, uh, allocation mechanism. Uh, you find to this website all the details. Uh, those are, uh, there are two kinds of uh, accesses here. There is one that is a, a small access called uh, pre preparatory access that permits to uh, test and benchmark uh, your applications or your test cases. And then uh, there is a big uh, regular access where when you are confident enough, you can approach to run uh, large uh, simulations. For all the scientists that are affiliated to Italian institutions, there are also the ISCRA mechanisms. And here you can apply also for short and small allocations, and also for larger production allocations. For any kind of information in particular on the allocation process, you can uh, contact the support of the Max Center or even uh, the, the, uh, the uh, user support uh, at Cineca. And I guess uh, that this is uh, everything uh, from my side. Thanks, Fabio. So uh, let me go quickly. I see a couple of questions that perhaps we may want to discuss uh, live. Uh, a couple of them are about compilers. So if we just disregard GPU support, uh, uh, what is the performance difference uh, using PGI or Excel? Compiler in general, how large can be the discrepancy in performance uh, uh, across compilers uh, and then another uh, user Samuel Ponce was asking what about the difficulties in compiling using the um, uh, IBM Excel compiler can you can you comment on it on them on them yes yes very quickly uh, for honesty uh, I should say that uh, we are we don't have enough experience to assess which is the best one um, in particular for what concerns the IBM compilers, uh, uh, the machine has been uh, put into production less than one month ago and uh, we are still uh, getting familiar with those uh, uh, compilers. What I could say is that in, very, in principle the IBM compilers are architectured uh, to target the IBM CPUs. Um, they have some very interesting features because they claim that they can use both OpenMP and OpenACC instructions for offloading on the GPUs. So under this point of view, those are very interesting. With the PGI, we have a little bit more experience. Uh, and uh, in some sense, experience means also knowing more bugs than uh, uh, than, than for other compilers. But uh, we trust uh, those compilers uh, uh, quite a lot also because uh, there is a, a nice support from, from uh, NVIDIA for, for those compilers. What is still to, to, to see, and, uh, and it will be interesting in the future, is to understand how much reliable can be using uh, the GNU compilers uh, together the um, the drivers for uh, GPUs. So this is still something that uh, is not uh, uh, very mature at the moment, but we will see in the future what we will be. Okay, uh, thanks Fabio. One more quick question uh, is asking uh, about access to Marconi 100. Since we have been discussing a bit about this machine, uh, is it possible to get access from non-European countries? So what are the main channels to to get yeah. access to? Yes, uh, in general, ISCRA is only related to all people having an affiliation to Italian universities or other research entities. But PRAISE also accepts from abroad, so it's not limited to Europe. Okay, so I think that for the time being we are done with questions. I see many more questions about uh, performance or features on GPUs, but uh, Pietro Bonfa will 
ask about them. So I would tend to leave the stage to Pietro. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, fine. Uh, let's share my presentation, which should be this one. Can you see the presentation? Yes, great. Seems you're all set. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm Pietro Bonfa, uh, and uh, I will uh, present uh, how to compile and use Quantum Espresso GPU on Marconi 100, but actually uh, Marconi 100 will just be an example uh, to describe uh, how to efficiently use uh, Quantum Espresso on NVIDIA powered uh, hybrid systems. Uh, so I pointed out uh, a few of the many questions that uh, uh, I could spot in uh, the question and answer uh, window. I hope uh, I remember to answer all of you. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, uh, maybe Andrea Ferretti can help me uh, in uh, yeah, going back to the question that I missed. Uh, but I'll try to uh, mention the questions during the presentation. So uh, let's start. Uh, this you have seen already. Uh, this is where you can find uh, the GPU enabled version of Quantum Espresso, which can exploit uh, NVIDIA uh, graphic cards. Uh, there is a new release, brand new, uh, version 6.5A2, and that's definitely what you, want, what you want to use because it includes uh, some bug fixing, important bug fixing, and, uh, um, and also new features. Uh, so you click on this uh, link here and you find the new release, but uh, very important also check out the wiki. Uh, you find it in the same repository and uh, inside the wiki you do find optimized installed instructions. This will uh, point uh, to the same page that Fabio was describing before. And uh, as you know, Marconi 100 uh, is brand new and uh, the software stack uh, is uh, improving and there will be certainly new options available in the next days. And we will update the install instructions for HPC system accordingly. And so keep an eye on that page. Uh, there are instructions for Marconi 100, but not only for Marconi 100, also other HPC systems around the world and uh, you are very welcome to contribute to this wiki if you manage to install and uh, run efficiently uh, Quantum Espresso on your clusters. So this is really a collaborative effort. And so, uh, so what next? Uh, first things first, compiling Quantum Espresso. Uh, is as simple as the CPU version, just uh, dot slash configure. And then a few options that uh, you probably haven't seen before. And so I will quickly go through them, uh, but I won't just throw you some numbers. I would just I'll try to explain very briefly what are uh, those new parameters that you have to specify. Uh, I don't know if you see my pointer, but I, I try to uh, do uh, without it. So, we wrote uh, Quantum Espresso GPU uh, using uh, uh, the software stack provided by NVIDIA. The GPU is uh, a device, a piece of hardware, and like any other device on your laptop or on a computer, to use it, you have drivers. But it would have been amazingly difficult to write a scientific application using only the APIs provided by the driver. And indeed, for this reason, uh, NVIDIA provides you CUDA, which is a set of APIs, which are more abstract, and uh, uh, allows you to interact with the driver in a much more simpler form. And we, through the CUDA uh, runtime, through the CUDA libraries, uh, we can use and exploit the device. Actually, what happens is that most of the compute uh, intensive uh, up, up, um, operations like FFTs or VGM have already been coded for us, again, in the CUDA toolkit. And so what QA really exploits is the interfaces provided by the runtime, the CUDA runtime and CUDA libraries, 
that are both included in the CUDA toolkit that you can install on your laptop, your computer, or is available already uh, on uh, hybrid uh, HPC systems. So what you will need, of course, for this reason, is the version of the CUDA toolkit that is installed on your system. And you will have to specify where the CUDA toolkit is installed. Uh, on HPC systems is, in general, an environment variable, which is CUDA home or something like that. And instead, uh, on your laptop, uh, the configure script will do its best to find it. Uh, otherwise, you will have to specify where it has been installed by your package manager. And, uh, well, uh, it's usually user lib64 or opt. Well, it depends on your system. And uh, with the other option, with CUDA runtime, you will have to specify the version of the CUDA uh, toolkit that you have installed on your system. Next is something rather, uh, well, it's something new probably for uh, those not familiar with uh, GPU systems, GPU architecture. You will have to specify the compute capabilities of the card that is installed on your system. Uh, the compute capability is uh, uh, a number that uh, specify the features that are, uh, the architectural features that are available on your card. And you can find this number with uh, a command that is provided with PGI compilers, which is called PGI Excel Info. As you can see on the bottom of this slide, you grab for CC, the number that follows CC is the compute capabilities of the card that is installed on your system. Uh, the executable that you will compile this way will only be uh, usable, can only be used with graphic cards, with uh, GPU cards that have the same compute capabilities. So you cannot build a single executable and run it on any uh, GPU card from NVIDIA. Of course, uh, this reminds me to tell you that you can compile uh, the GPU version of the code with PGI compilers. And so you will need both the CUDA toolkit, as I already told you, and PGI compilers. No, now, someone asked uh, if it can be compiled with GNU, and the answer is no. Someone also asked, uh, well, but I have to pay for PGI compilers, and the answer is again, no, you can download for free the community edition from PGI website. And uh, uh, you will have to agree to a license, but it's free of charge, and you can compile the code and run it uh, on the uh, HPC system or on your laptop. In general, HPC system already provides you PGI compiler. Uh, so, uh, so I think I covered all of this, uh, the three parameters. The last one is enable OpenMP. And uh, uh, well, this is uh, extremely important and we'll see why uh, in a second. Uh, let's just move to the next slide uh, first what is provided with the uh, uh, Quantum Espresso GPU, the last release that I just mentioned. Uh, well, you have two accelerated executables, PWSCF and Carparinello. Of course, this will exploit uh, the accelerated version of the subroutines containing the modules of the Quantum Espresso package and accelerated version of the libraries that are already uh, that have already been uh, separated in send, sending and send alone libraries. Uh, and so actually, if uh, your code exploits one of these uh, components, you may already benefit from GPU acceleration. So this should answer the question what uh, executable are accelerated now, PWSCF and CP, Phonon is uh, uh, the next big thing to come. Of course, uh, that will be uh, together with NEB, uh, the next uh, set of uh, codes that will uh, undergo uh, the uh, um, development of the accelerated part. Uh, so I think I can move uh, to the next point. And another question, which is rather important, is uh, what you get with the accelerated version of uh, uh, the codes. Actually, I will focus on PW here. Uh, you do find a number of different versions online if you Google for uh, GPU Quantum Espresso. There is a very older version 5.4. Forget about it. It's not maintained. It's 
let, let Donny just mention that, let's skip it completely. There is a version 6.1, which is an independent project by uh, Filippo Spiegel and NVIDIA that uh, can be used, but uh, it only implements a few specific functions. There are other functions that are not available. Uh, version 6.4, uh, starting from version 6.4 and with the last release 6.5A2, uh, you get all the features uh, of uh, PW uh, that uh, can be uh, already used with the CPU version. Uh, so you can really use the same input files. You can even restart from simulations that were produced with the CPU version and uh, it's one-to-one uh, -one compatible. And the important thing is that uh, quite a few features now can benefit from GPU acceleration, but not all of them. Uh, as you can see, the number of green A's is, uh, increases uh, with new releases, uh, but some of them, like for example, DFT plus U, still, uh, are, are still executed on the CPU. And this can become a problem uh, on some systems for uh, the reason that we will see uh, soon with the next slides. Uh, if that happens, well, we, uh, you are uh, really uh, invited to let us know if uh, some of the features that you want to use uh, become a bottleneck on the system that you are uh, using, on the accelerator system that you are using. Um, so, okay, so I want to, uh, I've seen that the, um, the poll uh, online. So no, I've, I've, from the poll I saw that not all of you are familiar uh, with uh, uh, how to use Quantum Express. I want just to uh, yeah, start from uh, uh, the nice old world of homogeneous HPC systems and then move uh, to the uh, world of heterogeneous HPC systems. Well, the thing will be completely different. This is how you uh, should run Quantum Espresso on uh, a homogeneous HPC system. You use MPI run, you generally use MPI parallelism, and you set the number of pools or NK for uh, partitioning the workload uh, in, uh, on different K points in reciprocal space and uh, giving it to the various MPI tasks of your uh, parallel execution. Then you have NDIAG, which is used to solve the uh, dense eigenvalue problem in parallel with many MPI processes. And finally, you have N task group, which is used and is useful when uh, the number of planes in the uh, grid, in the real space grid, is uh, larger than the number of MPI tasks that uh, you are using to run the executable. More or less, uh, this is uh, what we've been using uh, for, a, uh, for a while now, I think, because these options are implemented, uh, have been implemented quite some time ago. And uh, very quickly, so if you have an input like this, uh, this has 686 atoms, uh, a few K points that you can see below. Uh, let me go a little bit quick. Uh, it's not the aim of this talk to talk about uh, uh, homogeneous SPC world, but this is what you get. Uh, you start with uh, uh, a large number of MPI uh, tasks. Uh, this, is, uh, this corresponds to eight nodes uh, on the machine where these were acquired. And uh, you, uh, yeah, you are forced to use a single pool because you lack memory, uh, you don't have enough memory, but as soon as you can switch on pool parallelism, you observe some, this kind of uh, super linear behavior. So there is a, a a speed up, which uh, uh, just, just because pool parallelism is very effective, uh, so an efficiency greater than one, and this somehow reduces uh, later when pool parallelism uh, cannot help anymore because you have four points in this input. Uh, but, ah, and notice that you shouldn't actually never, uh, should never ever run with why this parameter for n diag equal to one, uh, you, you cannot even do that in the, with this input. You are, always have to use uh, a parallel eigen solver for uh, the dense eigenvalue problem. But this is if you forgot completely about task group and OpenMP. If you remember about task group, well, task groups helps you from the very beginning. And you see that this uh, uh, 
efficiency greater than one uh, reduces because uh, the first point could benefit from task group parallelism. And this is without OpenMP. And as you know, OpenMP helps you in the final part while you still get uh, the best time to solution that is what is shown here uh, with a pure MPI uh, parallelization in the left part of this plot. Okay, so this is the picture and the situation with uh, the, within the homogeneous SPC world. Now let's move to the heterogeneous SPC world. First off, we go back to Marconi 100 and we notice that a single GPU card has more or less, is more or less 10 times more powerful than, more powerful than the entire node. And uh, so basically all the computational power comes from the GPU. And unfortunately, exploiting this computational power requ requires uh, very large data parallel workloads. And uh, this cannot always be achieved. That depends uh, on the inputs. Now, as uh, Pietro already mentioned, we have recently published uh, uh, a new uh, journal article where we analyze uh, this, exactly this point. And uh, uh, in the picture that you see here, the system where we run the uh, test and the benchmark is different, but the same ratio between the compute power of the CPU and the GPU uh, was used. And you see that in order to uh, achieve a, uh, a speed up, which is in the order of uh, uh, between two and, uh, and four, I mean, generally it's three times faster with that ratio between uh, uh, computational power of the CPU and the GPU. Well, you need sufficiently large inputs. And uh, uh, you have a number of cases that have been uh, considered in this uh, paper, and you can check if, for example, uh, your high throughput set of computations can really benefit from GPU acceleration or not. That really depends on the size of your input and, of course, on the ratio between the uh, CPU power and the GPU power on the node uh, that uh, you have. So, uh, well, we can make them back later on this point during the questions. Now, let's go back to Marconi 100 because, uh, as you remember from Fabio's presentation, we actually have four GPU cards, four Volta cards. And uh, since essentially all the computational power comes from the GPUs, we want to use the same uh, uh, algorithms and data uh, and domain decomposition uh, that is implemented within Quantum Espresso using the MPI uh, parallelization. And therefore, we, we run uh, Quantum Espresso with as many MPI processes as GPU cars. Now this should answer, uh, I hope, uh, uh, the question about uh, high GPU over allocation. Uh, I, I saw this in question and answer before. Uh, uh, I can come back on this point later, but uh, basically the point is that the real computational power is in the GPU. So we need to run uh, Quantum Espresso with uh, as many MPI processes as the GPU that you have. Uh, in your node or in the set of nodes that you're using. But by doing so, you would be using only a small fraction of the, uh, of the CPU power. Uh, and this is extremely bad, of course, for the uh, portion of computation uh, that uh, is uh, necessarily left on the CPU. So for the GPU version of the uh, code, you should never forget OpenMP parallelism. That's the way we can exploit the entire computational power from the graphic cards and the entire computational power from the CPU uh, on the host node. Okay, so uh, that being said, what about parallel execution options? That the ones that we are familiar with from the homogeneous HPC world. Uh, well, uh, this is what they do. And I can tell you that uh, first off, in version 6.5A2, only one device, one GPU, is used to solve uh, the eigenvalue problem. Uh, this will likely change in the near future, but for the time being, we have a serial eigen solver on the GPU. So you will have to use 
and diag equal one. If you want to exploit the computational power of the GPU uh, for solving the uh, dense eigenvalue problem. And instead, uh, as you could probably uh, already, uh, as you probably already understood, uh, since we are now running with a much smaller number, smaller number of MPI processes, uh, task group parallelism is never really useful and uh, is actually not entirely implemented in version uh, 6.5a2, but it, it, it's not because, uh, uh, it, it's just because it's not uh, really useful because you are always dealing with a few and much, a much smaller number of MPI processes uh, than in the CPU first version. So basically you forget about uh, n task group, uh, you leave uh, it, uh, you can leave it out. Uh, the default value for a task group is one, so it's fine. But instead you should always check that in the GPU version, so when you see GPU acceleration is active, uh, the uh, uh, eigenvalue problem is solved with a serial algorithm because this is the algorithm that is uh, provided with GPU acceleration. Now let's go back to uh, k-point parallelism. Well, that is extremely effective, but as you probably know, uh, that leads to memory uh, duplication. So you, the more you increase X, the more memory is required. And unfortunately, you only have 16 gigabytes of uh, memory on a GPU card. Uh, so basically this will become your nightmare. Uh, you will have to find the best value for X uh, the largest uh, value, th that depends of course on the number of K points that you have in your input, but in general, you find yourself uh, fighting to fit the uh, wave function inside the GPU memory. And uh, the uh, estimator that you find in the output, uh, the line that reports the max dynamical RAM per process is your friend can help you because uh, uh, as you can read here, this is uh, this estimates RAM, so the memory on the host, but since almost all the computation is, perf is performed on the GPU, this is a very close estimate also from, for the memory that will be required uh, for each MPI uh, process, uh, that means for each GPU. And, uh, and always remember that this is a lower estimate. So even though this number is smaller than 16 gigabyte, uh, if you are getting close, and close means a few gigabytes from the limit, uh, one or two gigabytes for the limit may be fine, but uh, if you encounter problems, you may be uh, running out of memory on the GPU. So, as I told you, uh, that will happen for sure, and so what to do? Well, of course, the trivial answer is use more GPUs, and uh, that will, however, not help uh, if you have problem with uh, uh, the uh, solution of the connection, the diagonalization of the connection problem. And so, uh, you, one could do one, one. What can be done is to reduce uh, the uh, dimension of the subspace used used in Davidson diagonalization. And this, there is an important option in the input. Uh, is Diago David and Dim equal two? The default value is four. This uh, reduces uh, substantially the memory required for the Davidson algorithm and can help in many situations. Uh, if this is not enough, you can switch to uh, the conjugate gradient method, but this is much, uh, is certainly much slower than Davidson. And so first try uh, with the Diago, David and Dim equal to reducing the dimension of the uh, subspace in Davidson uh, diagonalization, next try uh, conjugate gradient. And uh, instead, if you happen to uh, find a simulation that becomes very slow because what is left on the uh, CPU, uh, which are uh, some um, a portion of the, com the capabilities of Quantum Express, uh, well, what is left on the CPU may become a bottleneck. Uh, if you find one, if you find yourself in this situation, uh, please open an issue uh, on this website and we will try to uh, work on it. So basically this is it. And uh, the take home message is uh, one MPI process per GPU. 
I hope uh, uh, that now the reason is uh, clear, uh, the reason why we have to do this. And uh, of course, uh, also never forget OpenMP parallelism. And I explained why uh, you should always uh, use OpenMP. That's to saturate the uh, CPU. Full parallelism is very effective, but uh, you will certainly uh, fight for uh, uh, fitting the wave function in the GPU memory. And always remember to check that the serial agent solver is used when you're running with GPUs, at least for the time. Uh, in the future, there will be a parallel uh, eigen solver working also on GPUs. Check the wiki, uh, it's uh, out there and uh, will certainly um, provide you with the best options to run uh, on Marconi, Saint, uh, Marconi 100 and possibly other uh, clusters. And finally, uh, this new paper describes in detail the GPU version and also has some important suggestions for uh, running smaller inputs, uh, somehow uh, I took put like a uh, set of uh, simulations. And uh, I think uh, this is it, so thanks for the attention. Thanks, Pietro, thanks a lot. So, uh, I think you have already covered most of the questions that were already partly answered during the the talk, in particular, uh, the fact that you have to connect uh, one MPI task with one uh, GPU card. Uh, I think that the options to make the binding was probably given in uh, Fabio's uh, talk. Uh, one more, a couple of questions were about uh, how to compute GW, quasi-particle corrections on GPUs, I'd say that uh, this is the topic of uh, one of the future webinars of this series, the Yambo webinar that will be called on June 16th, uh, quasi-particle band structures and excitations in novel materials using the Yambo code. There was, so this just in passing by, there was a, a question about the exact exchange porting. So perhaps, uh, uh, I don't know if you want to comment on it. Yes, exact exchange uh, is uh, implemented and uh, accelerated. So you can uh, already try it and, uh, and use it on uh, Marconi 100. Okay, thanks. Uh, so there are five more questions. Let me check them out. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, the, the binding, as you said, uh, was in Fabio, uh, in the presentation that Fabio just uh, gave before me. So one uh, uh, question is, what about uh, QE GPU performance? Uh, what is the performance gained? Okay, per dollar spent perhaps is, uh, is uh, more difficult or uh, CPU plus GPU versus CPU on Marconi 100 or on other machines? Uh, so, so, sorry, um, I heard sorry the last, uh, I, th I think I understood the question. If I missed something, just because of the connection, just tell me. So, uh, the speed up. So yeah. this is more or less about uh, how much you gain from using GPUs. And uh, so there are, there are a few points. Of course, that depends on the input, but uh, let's, uh, for example, consider Marconi 100. Uh, with Marconi 100, uh, if you are dealing with a small input, uh, or let's say something that uh, fit inside uh, a node, so basically your problem would be the memory. So the memory, the 64 gigabytes of memory uh, on a single node, uh, well, uh, the, what to compare? Uh, I, I have seen uh, uh, so improvements uh, compared to the previous machine in Chineke, the KNL machine, uh, which uh, is on, in the order of uh, four to six uh, and more <laughs> times faster. But uh, this is not really. I think it's more important to, to, to share the problems than the, the, the speed up. Uh, so, for example, if you're dealing with large input, uh, with, which require uh, uh, the diagonalization of uh, an eigenvalue problem, which is big, uh, then uh, you will see uh, 
much worse results. So uh, maybe I can uh, I can share uh, my final slide. Uh, Yes, so, uh, so for example, this is the simulation of, uh, uh, can, can you see, you can see, see my, my, my slides? Mm, not really. No, okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so, well, big, big, um, big eigenvalue problems uh, are, uh, are a bottleneck now. Uh, big, because you are diagonalizing them with a single uh, GPU. And that leads to some, uh, may lead to important slowdowns when uh, you are uh, running, uh, for example, a simulation that requires uh, uh, tens of uh, nodes on Marconi 100. Uh, that being said, uh, yes, uh, the, the the speed up, uh, for example, in the inputs that I've shown the paper uh, that recently published in uh, uh, Journal of Physical Chemistry, I believe. Uh, well, uh, for example, in, the, in that case, uh, the speed up were between three and four uh, during chemical physics, sorry. Uh, the speed up was in between uh, three and four when the GPU uh, Power, um, the GPU was saturated, uh, but the ratio between the computational power on the, the uh, node, so the CPU and the GPU was a uh, factor 10. This should be this, this, the scale that you may expect. So is it, is, it, is it clear? I hope I answered all the questions because I, I really missed a piece uh, of your question. No, I think that you, you, got, the, you got the very point. So the... Um, so a few other questions were asking whether it is worth to run uh, quantum espresso on uh, let's say pc or laptop cards uh, uh, my answer was that uh, you better not so you may not gain much you may even lose performance perhaps uh, you can provide a better answer to that yes that's true that that depends uh, on uh, the actually that depends on the graphic card that you have but in general uh, the uh, GPUs that are on your uh, laptop, on the laptops, uh, are not optimized for double precision uh, computation. And uh, that's actually what uh, uh, Quantum Espresso exploits the most. So uh, you do have uh, uh, a few cores uh, out of the thousand of cores that uh, are inside a GPU that uh, can deal with double precision computation. And that does mean that you don't get much out of the a GPU for uh, from a, a laptop graphic card. So there's uh, probably we can take one last question that is uh, how does the memory usage of a QE uh, GPU job correlate uh, correlates with the number of requested CPU cores and GPU cards? Um, I think that if one keeps in mind the, the rule of thumb one MPI one GPU Basically, this kind of answers the, uh, the question. We have a feeling of how memory is distributed using MPI tasks. Then you think that each MPI is, correct, is connected to one card, and that does the, the job. One extra piece of information I can add here is that typically these machines are all set in a way that the memory bottleneck are the GPUs. So typically, your job will fit the host memory, and it may have issues with the GPUs, but uh, if it goes on the GPUs, it fits very well the host. Again, Pietro, yes. if you want to, to, to further comment, you're welcome. No, you, you said it. Uh, forget about uh, the memory on the host. It's more than, it's much more than the GPU. If it fits the GPU, it will fit uh, the RAM. Okay, so I think that we are- At least on Marconi 100, that is the, for Marconi 100 for sure. But in general, uh, that, that, that's what you said, it was perfect. So I, I think we are running very late now. There are still a few questions that we'll ask you in the, we'll answer directly in the, in the chat. And uh, so I'll take the occasion to uh, thank all the speakers of this session. So uh, Pietro De Lugas, Fabio Finito and uh, 
Pietro Bonfa and also uh, trusted for the technical uh, setup of the webinar and thanks to you all for, uh, for the attention. I don't know if there are any other messages. So yeah, here there's uh, an announcement for the next webinar. It is about... Uh, Yes, yes, Andrea. I can I, I can close it down. I uh, just want to, as you said, uh, thank you all the speakers and thanks all the big uh, uh, attendance we got uh, this afternoon. And uh, it's been really, really nice to see this uh, huge involvement in, the, in this webinar. So we are very uh, welcome to invite you over to the next one that is going to be on the 27th of May, same hour. It's going to be on AIDA registration are already open uh, so thanks again to all of you so stay well take care of yourself and uh, have a good day goodbye everybody bye 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 thank you bye